The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with breaking news. Law enforcement has determined an officer involved shooting in April of last year was within department policy. The Kern County Sheriff's Office released body cam video of the incident. The shooting happened April 18, 2020 on May Street in Oildale. Deputies say someone fired at them from a car when they arrived. Then the suspects took off, starting a police chase. KCSO says the car finally stopped near the intersection of California Avenue and Mervyn's place. That's where more shots were fired between 38 year old Graciano Ceballos and the deputies. Ceballos died at the scene. The second man, identified as Eduardo Ceballos, was arrested and pleaded no contest. He'll be sentenced in July. No deputies were hurt in that shooting. Now in your 17 court watch, the preliminary hearing for Matthew Queen, accused in the torture and murder of one of the Bakersfield three, continues today. Queen was in court yesterday and there was testimony about several aspects of Micah Holson Bakes killing, including the discovery of his severed arm in a bag in the Kern River. Investigators said a black zip tie was around its wrist and it was determined the arm had been severed below the elbow. That arm was later identified as belonging to Holson Bake. The rest of his body has not been found. Police also testified yesterday recalling a traffic stop in which four guns were found inside Queen's car. In another incident, a man testified Queen and others took him from his bed at gunpoint and drove him around while Queen asked him if he'd been speaking to police. That witness testified he and Queen had been illegally manufacturing and selling AR-style rifles. You can watch testimony live streamed on our website, KGET.com. And jury deliberations continue in the trial of Nicholas Quintana. Quintana is accused of killing Bakersfield attorney Marco Vargas after meeting each other on a dating app. Quintana faces life without parole if convicted of first degree murder with special circumstances. And the case for a former Kern County Sheriff's deputy accused of kissing and groping a woman against her will has been postponed. The charges stem from an incident where Michael Everett Clark on duty and in his patrol vehicle allegedly offered a ride home to a woman. She accepted and when they got to her house, Clark forced himself on her, kissing and groping her, according to court documents. The woman settled a claim she filed against the sheriff's office in connection to Clark's behavior for $25,000, according to county records. Clark has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Well, scary moments this morning after a driver fell asleep behind the wheel, causing a crash on the grapevine. According to California Highway Patrol, it happened around 3.40 this morning on southbound Interstate 5. CHP says a 21-year-old was driving a big rig when he fell asleep. He woke up and overcorrected, causing him to overturn at the Lebec curve. The trailer overturned in a way where no lights were visible. Now, a Dodge pickup did not see that trailer in the roadway and crashed into it. The driver of the semi, along with two people in the pickup, suffered moderate injuries and were taken to the hospital for treatment. Southbound I-5 remained closed for several hours as crews worked to clear the scene. And fire officials are investigating what led to an early morning structure fire in central Bakersfield. It happened just after 4.30 on Brundage Lane and 8th Street. Bakersfield Fire says the building was fully engulfed in flames when they arrived. 41 firefighters were on scene working to control the blaze. BFD says the building had been vacant for several years. Arson investigators are working to determine the cause of the blaze. And the search continues for an accused child killer who escaped from jail. Tyrone Johnson and David Palms escaped the Laredo jail over a week ago. Both are accused of killing three-year-old Major Sutton in 2017. Palms was tracked down and arrested, but there's been no sign of Johnson. Tyrone Johnson is armed and dangerous. If you see him, do not approach him, but call 911. And from our 17 follow-up file, today marks 136 days since four-year-old Orin and three-year-old Orson West were first reported missing from their home in California City. The Bakersfield Police Department has not reported any new developments, but say they have not given up the search. If you have any information about the boys that might be useful to investigators, you can rem remain anonymous and call the secret witness hotline at 322-4040. You can find all the latest updates to this story on our website, kget.com. And that's the latest on the coronavirus pandemic here in Kern County. Public Health announced 65 new cases today and six new deaths. 1,367 people have died from the virus since the beginning of the pandemic. Meantime, state data shows 37 people are in the hospital with the virus. Only seven people are in the ICU. 
Well, Moderna says early data shows that its coronavirus vaccine is highly effective in teens. According to Moderna, an initial analysis from over 3,200 teens ages 12 to 17 showed an efficacy rate of 96%. The analysis included 12 cases that started 14 days after the first dose. Moderna says the vaccine was generally well tolerated and no serious safety concerns were identified. The vaccine is currently authorized for use in adults 18 years and older. But Moderna also says that it plans to submit data to the FDA for full approval for adults later this month. In the meantime, those 16 and up are eligible for the vaccine. Bakersfield College nursing students and the Student Health and Wellness Center are teaming up to offer two COVID vaccine clinics this week. The first will be held tomorrow at David Nelson Pocket Park. They're offering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Then on Saturday, they're hosting a drive through clinic on BC's campus. They're giving out the first and second doses of the Moderna vaccine from 10 a.m. to noon. And to sign up for those clinics or other local sites that are offering the COVID-19 vaccine, head to the state's website. That's myturn.ca.gov. You can also make an appointment to get the shot by calling 833-422-4255. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. Well, happening today, you have a chance to get your children up to date on immunizations. Adventist Health is hosting a child immunization clinic in the parking lot of Walmart on Colony Street. It's happening until 2 p.m. Vaccinations are free. Just call ahead to schedule an appointment. That number is 869-6740. And if you missed today's clinic, don't worry. There are plenty of other opportunities throughout the month. For more information, you can find that on our website, kget.com. For months now, we've heard the warnings from fire officials. It's going to be an intense wildfire season, and we're already seeing a preview of what's expected to come. Now, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, currently all of Kern County is in extreme drought. Previously, a few parts of the county were considered to be in severe drought. However, a very dry start to the year has caused the drought to worsen. Now, last year, we saw nearly 10,000 wildfires burning more than 4 million acres. And this year is showing we may be in for another very active season. Out of the 20 most destructive wildfires, 15 of them happened in the last 10 years. And we're seeing uh, vegetation changes. We're seeing uh, extreme drought. Um, and, and with that, the fires are burning more intense than ever. They're uh, harder to control. We, it takes more people to put them out. And then with urban sprawl, we've got a recipe for disaster. Chief Witt says with the right winds, a fire can take off anywhere, even here in town. He reminds residents to always be prepared in case a wildfire does start. It's National Prayer Day. Prayer celebrations will be taking place across Kern County throughout the day. Most events are being held in person, a huge difference from the virtual celebrations last year. It's another sign of hope as COVID-19 restrictions lessen. There are two other events scheduled later today in Delano and Wasco. 17's Ileana Capion spoke to officials on why these events are more important than years before. National Day of Prayer was established in 1952 by President Harry Truman. Truman declared it for July 4th, but in the 80s, President Ronald Reagan changed National Day of Prayer to the first Thursday in May. Since its establishment, local communities have used it as a day to encourage unity and prayer among people of all religions. I think this year has been unprecedented. Uh, of any year, people have gone through more challenges, not just physical, but people's mental health has been challenged. A lot of people have been living in isolation and uh, we're just saying, hey, it's a great time to come out, to be together, call and ask for God's help to heal our land. In Bakersfield, Canyon Hills Church will be hosting National Day of Prayer at the Liberty Bell on Truxton Avenue at noon. In Wasco, Mayor Alex Garcia, in correlation with the Orange Heart Foundation and the city's Recreation and Parks District, will be hosting their bilingual event at 6 p.m. at the playground on 15th and D Streets. In the city of Wasco, I recognize uh, the power of the faith community and how uh, important it is to our residents. And so now in this time of strife in our community and across the nation, I think it's important more than ever now that we unite uh, as community members, leaders, residents, 
faith leaders, um, and really lift up our community, our streets, our neighborhoods, and our leaders. This event coming just days after tragedy, the city's second homicide this year. The Delano Chamber of Commerce will be honoring National Day of Prayer at the Delano First Assembly of God at 6 p.m. with the hopes that this event will bring together people from all walks of life. Our prayer is to unify people because um, this year has been kind of um, all over the board. And so we're grateful that we have this opportunity to pray for one another and feel compassion and hope and bring that to the city of Delano. Following a year of uncertainty, isolation, and social injustice, this will be the 69th year for the National Day of Prayer. Now, for the full list of events taking place, you can head to our website, kget.com. Well, it's also Teacher Appreciation Week, and later today, or today, actually, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools will announce the Teachers of the Year, an honor that means more than ever in a year of distance learning and school closures. The Kern County Superintendent of Schools has spent the week honoring Kern County's 48 Teacher of the Year nominees through a video series. A new video has been posted each morning on Kern.org. The video campaign will culminate with a virtual ceremony this evening at 4, where three Kern County Teachers of the Year will be named. And today is National Nurses Day and several businesses are offering free treats and discounts to the, those who have been on the front lines during the COVID-19 pandemic. All day nurses can stop by Dunkin Donuts for a free coffee or IHOP for 25% off your meal. Feeling something sweet? Well, nurses can also get in on the deals at Cinnabon and Mrs. Fields Cookies. And for dinner, Outback Steakhouse, Panda Express and Chipotle are offering a discount. For a full list of those businesses offering deals, head to our website, kget.com. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.